If you like my art, you can buy it as prints, keychains, bookmarks, stickers, washi tape, notepads. You find it all in my shop. Link is in the description box below. Hi everyone, welcome back. So I'm gonna do something that I am probably very, very late to, as usual. A while ago I bought this, the Create This Book 2 by Mariah Elizabeth. I thought it might be a good and fun way to do something new whenever I feel like I'm out of ideas. I'm not really out of ideas, but I've had this laying around for such a long time, so I figured Let's just do this. So what I understand, this is filled with artsy and sometimes crafty prompts. And as the title suggests, you're creating the content of this book yourself since you're filling the pages with your own creations. Like this one, create splatter. Oh, that could be fun. So I'm gonna do a few prompts today. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know and I might do some more in the future. So yeah, let's get into this. But before we pick the first prompt, let's decorate the front cover. It is literally telling me to do so. I do wonder though what kind of art medium that sticks to this because it is like a velvety kind of rubbery like texture. So yeah, let's get started. So I used the back of the book to do some swatching, starting with a Posca pen. Posca draws on basically everything, even this book cover, and the paint is very opaque. Color pencils didn't stick to the smooth surface at all, which was pretty much what I expected, so we can count that out. I'm also giving acrylic paint and acrylic gouache a go too, and they both worked very well. The paint is very opaque. Lastly, I tested Copics, which is alcohol-based ink, so it pretty much sticks to most surfaces too, even though the ink is all translucent. But as I suspected though, all the paint scraped off really easily, which isn't ideal for a book cover. The Copic ink though cannot be removed even if I tried, so that is what we will go with. So this is nothing complicated at all. I just picked out a few colors that I thought would look neat together and then I did sort of like a gradient. The coating of the cover doesn't allow the ink to seep into the paper. They will just stay on top. So the colors looks a little streaky, but I will use that to my advantage to create some interesting textures. So once I have all the colors down, I bring out my refill bottle of colorless ink and I seem to just drip it all over the cover where the colors are. The colorless ink will reactivate the colored ink and move it around and create almost like a drippy effect. I finish it all up by adding some more details with the markers directly. I decided to tidy up the backside as well to tie it all together. I had gone ahead and scraped off all the paints with a palette knife. You can barely see that the paint was there in the first place, but you can still see the Copic swatches. So I just draw over it with the markers and make a similar thing on the back cover as on the front. So now it all looks a little more cohesive. So yeah, here we have it. I really like how this turned out. It got like a watercolor look to it and I really like this drippy effect. And the backside also turned out pretty good. It felt a little meh after I tested out the different art supplies on it. And as I mentioned, I just scraped off the paint swatches so it was very easy to cover it up with the markers. You can still see some of the marker residues though, but um, I think I covered it up pretty well, so now the backside look neat as well. I realized I didn't paint the, the spine of the book, so maybe I should just, maybe I should just do that. Also, this is the sound that I had to put up with during the whole drawing session. During I was painting this, I was listening to an audiobook, and I almost couldn't focus on what they were saying because this sound just just squeaked through everything. So I don't think I want to drip any of the ink on there because I don't want it to run on, on the sides. But I can just take the colorless blender marker and to have it match a little better. So now we have a pretty front cover back cover and also spine. But yeah, I'm super excited to finally get started. So let's do that. 
All right, so the first prompt that I'm gonna do is this. Create a word illustration. Incorporate an illustration into a word to show its meaning. And here you can pause the video and write down your guess down in the comments on what word I will illustrate. I am pretty sure you will never be able to guess what it is. So I'm turning the book sideways so that I will get more surface to draw on. And I'm not exactly sure what art medium I can use in this book. The pages seems pretty thin and see-through. So whatever I draw on one page will probably show through on the backside. So in lowercase letters, we have a kitty curled up like a C. The grumpy cat in the middle forms an A. And of course, the two kitties at the very end together forms a T. So all of you who guessed cat for the word down in the comments, congratulations, well done, you know me too well. I decided to illustrate the word cat by drawing cats, forming the word cat very creative. I really like the purple, so I decided to outline it all with a purple purple fine liner as well. And to add a little more dimension and colors, I wanted to try these water-based brush markers. It will also be a test to see if the ink will bleed through or not. I can feel that the paper starts crumbling just a little, but I'm very careful, so it should be fine. So yeah, here it is. The markers and the fine liner did bleed through a little. You can clearly see them on the other side, but I think as long as you don't layer them too much, it should be no trouble using them. For the next prompt, I will do this. Create bleed, use markers or paints and let the colors bleed through the page. And what bleeds better through paper than alcohol ink? I'm putting a protective sheet under the page because even if I want the ink to bleed through, I don't want it to bleed through the whole book. So this is super, super simple. I just take the ink from my refill bottles and I drip it on the page. I'm using mainly greens and blues because they look good together, but also because I want to make this into a little illustration. Even though it doesn't say that I have to, I could just have done this bleed and moved on to another prom, but... So here we have a fantastic bleed, almost looks the same on front and back. And then I bring out my color pencils and start doodling these little leaves. The color and pattern of the ink, it reminds me of a pond. So I'm drawing some lily pads and a lily flower floating on the surface. Just something to make it a little more interesting. Color pencils seems to be a pretty good choice to draw with on this paper in this book. So it doesn't bleed through the paper. So yeah, a little pond and I thought this was done here, but I actually ended up coming back to this one later. Then let's go to this all black spread and the prompt is create on black, what else? For this one, I need the paints to be opaque so that it will show up on the black background. So I'm bringing out my gouache paints, which is basically opaque watercolors. And I hope that the paper will be able to handle the paint, but I will try to not use too much water, though I think it will be fine, hopefully. So here we have another cat, of course. My idea is to paint around it and create the shape of the cat by painting the background and then the cat will be the color of the paper. I'm starting with the grass. I'm imagining that this cat is sitting on a big field of grass and flowers. And the reason I love painting on black backgrounds is that the paints really pop. The colors look so good. And I like the black showing through. It is like there is line art, but there really isn't. It is just the black of the paper. For the sky, I made these cloud sections, which are divided by the black of the paper. Again, it looks like line art, but it really isn't. I really like this look. It kind of reminds me of lino printing almost. And I tried keeping the black of the paper for the pupils on the eyes, but it made the cat looking kind of angry. So I decided to color in the whole eye and then paint on the pupils with paint. 
paint. And then of course this meadow needed some flowers just to add some more details and also to bring all the colors in this piece together. And yeah, here it is, basically a doodle painting, but I really like how it turned out. So as I mentioned, I ended up circling back to the pond piece again. I didn't like how muddy the color pencils ended up looking on the green and blue background, so while I had the gouache paints out, I decided to brighten up this piece a bit. I also added a couple of koi fish to make it a little more interesting, and I may have spent a little too much time on this, but I think it turned out kind of cute at the end. So yeah, there we have all of them. I had so much fun drawing all of these prompts and I was actually planning to do one more but my allergies has been acting up lately and I just needed a break before I started editing this video. So that is all I had time for today, but at least I painted the cover and made three little doodles and I hope you like them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and maybe a comment if you would like to see more of this. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time. Keep drawing happy cats, bye!